you might ask yourself, okay, why are there chickens in with the quail? Why are they eating the same food as the quail? Well, um, typically you don't do this, but it's the midst of winter and the chickens actually would benefit um, in this, in this um, time of year. They actually benefit from getting a little extra calories. They go out there in winter and um, they, you know you wait until they get their, their uh, winter feathers grown in what we do is once they've um, grown up enough that they don't need the heat lamp we then put it low temperature heat in the um in the shed what we're in right now uh, it gets a low temperature heat and then eventually we try to release them in a warm spell you know uh, which will be probably later this week a warm spell is going to happen and it will last at least for a week um, and so that they can, you know, right now it's about, you know, not, not much difference between the temperature that it's going to be in with the warm spell. So, um, and then we do release them a little, a little bit um, older too. So the chickens actually aren't going to be released, it's just the quail um, that will be old enough, especially because some of those chickens are frizzles. Um, and that gene, you know, did not have th as thick of feathers or down. Um, so, yeah, the, the food actually, um, you know, normally is two different foods that I give them. But in winter time, it actually makes more sense. So these guys have been put together at a very young age. I want to stress that, you know, within the first week of life, they were put together. Um, and so they get along because of that. But, you know, you, you can't always say that they'll get along if they weren't put together you know um, and even a lot of them don't get along with each other and that is what I'm gonna be talking about next so an update on the day job um, these are all our mean ones um, they're gonna be going to butcher um, in several weeks uh, we, we're actually gonna probably butcher the, the chickens around the same time as the quail um, these are the ones that were really mean and would not have been able to um, really coexist with anybody else. Um, they would have pick fights and things. So, especially later in life, um, when they get their hormones raging, you know, uh, some of these, some of these chickens, especially, it doesn't matter whether they're rooster or hen. Most of these chickens. Um, they were just mean at birth. Um, that white one back there was initially one that I was, you know, on the fence about, and so was this uh, barred one. Um, I was on the, actually the barred one's a really sad story because um, he started out real kind and gentle, and when he started to get a bit of testosterone in him, that's when his personality started to change. So he's he, we're going to try our best to work with him, but he's already showing some some troubling signs of, of aggressiveness. So we just we don't know um, if, especially the more the calmer, um, you know, flock members. You know, he definitely would take advantage of the the nice calmer. You know, you just can't. If you had an all aggressive flock, maybe maybe. But it just, it's not a good idea to have a flock of all aggressive birds. You just, you know, you, you, you're playing with fire. You know, eventually neither is going to back down and you're going to get a bunch of injured birds. And so, you know, it's just better to, to only keep the ones that you can trust that they're not going to hurt anyone. Um, so it's sad. But yeah, all of these you are going to have to probably go to butcher. There might be one or two in here that we can spare uh, if we just do a little more behavioural test on them and see. Um, but the eye test, they all failed the eye test. What I talk about that in the other video, if you don't know what that is, you can look at that. They all failed that. You look into their eyes, basically. It's a, it's a pagan, old, pa old pagan trick that you do um, to see what their, their overall spirit and soul is and the intent, baseline intent of their soul. And if it's an aggressive or selfish or in another way 
um, you know, just something that you would know would be uh, not good to to mix with a docile flock. So, um, you know, they all failed that test and now we're going to give them one more behavioural chance, but, you know, the chances of them passing that test slimmed it on. So, um, you know, we do everything we can, but at the end of the day, you know, if they mean that they have to go to butcher, um, and nothing is ever wasted either. I'm the one that eats them. So, I even eat the bones, I do. I'm not joking, I have a video about how to cook uh, small bones to where you where they're edible and they just kind of melt in your mouth. So there's, um, no, I'm not actually talking about broth, I'm talking about the entire bone. Uh, so look that video up if you think I'm lying. And these here are the ones that all pass that eye test. Um, they're not even the ones that are on the fence, they're the ones that, you know, literally all of them passed. Um, there was one that barely passed, but he still passed. And we've got to wait for these. Now this guy right there, this path, that one, he or she, probably she actually, um, is, you know, would be fine right now. But the frizzles don't have a thick enough down yet. And we really need to get them to have real thick down before we just let them out in winter. Um, the quail though, they'll be ready um, in the next couple of days. And you'll actually, later in the vlog, you'll actually see, I'll release the quail into the aviary. And you'll get to see that later, but we, we won't do the chickens in this one, just the quail. But yeah, any chicken that you see in here though, will eventually have a free range life of bliss because they've passed that test of intent and, and behavior. A Cornish hen white is because I don't want them to get all those raging hormones in them and then start fighting each other and have to separate them. So, um, you know, we, we're gonna we're gonna do that um, sooner rather than later. But they have got a bit of time yet. Like I said, there might be one or two in here that maybe they're not the most gracious of souls, but there might be one or two here that could potentially that we could spare. And that's what I'm going to look at today. If it's anybody I can spare. I don't want to kill something unless I absolutely have to. Not even someone who's, you know, not the best in nature. So we actually just did a swap out. Um, there's, there was one in here that I was able to test and, and spare and put with the ones that I'm not going to butcher. There was one in here, a quail, that was um, kind of on the fence that I actually swapped and put in with the ones that are going to butcher because that one I I had watched uh, do a bit of bullying um, after some intense observing and things so pecking people's feathers off the heads and it's not in a not in a mating way but in a in a bullying way so as you can see the majority are gonna actually be released into free range environments and things. So we're only a few that we're actually gonna cull. I'm on, this barred one, it really does bother me because if he was just a hen, he would be fine. If he was a hen, he wouldn't be maddened by testosterone and he'd be fine and that's, that's the saddest one right there. That's gonna be the really sad when his day comes because it's not his fault, not really. It's just his genetics. Speaking of another rooster that we tested a while back, Patch. When we first put him out here, he was the lowest in the pecking order, but his fair share of the hens telling him no. And he got a bit impatient, and, but he never actually hurt anybody. And by now, the hens have accepted him. It's getting dusk, or almost dusk. So he's actually uh, in with them already. There he is, right there. Um, in the winter time, it's more difficult to clean the coop because everything freezes. You have to wait till it unthaws to muck it. Um, so I do apologise for that. But yeah, he's he he like I said passed the eye test flawlessly, and I just had to trust it, even though I wasn't optimistic. I had to trust it, and um, he's turned out to be a really nice rooster for all of our hens. So today is Judgment Day, is what I call it. Um, Anytime we release anybody out into the paddock, even 
the mean ones that are in this pin you see here, even the mean ones um, of same age um, are going to be picked up individually and given uh, the last uh, test. We, we did a couple eye tests on the image that I so call the old pagan eye trick, but we're going to do it again um, on these same individuals because everyone in here that's already passed the test, everyone in here that's already been approved to go out in the paddock, they're going to be released today. It's going to be a warm temperature for at least a week or more, uh, unnaturally warm, be perfect time to release them. And um, so while we're releasing these guys, you know, they get a free pass because they've already passed, but we're going to see if we can't spare anybody in the brooder of uh, less than perfect spirits. <laughs> these guys, uh, some of them are really mean, some of them are barely mean, and some of them are just uh, got just a, in general, very uh, domineering and, and possessive, <laughs> selfish attitude. Um, so we're going to see, okay, maybe they're not the perfect of souls, but can they pass enough of the test to be able to be put in with a flock without hurting anybody? All that we've determined thus far is that these guys are, you know, have, you know, aggressive and or uh, bullying tendencies. We haven't uh, completely tested their ability to get along with with other members of the flock that are um, vulnerable, old, young, low status, um, omegas. So yeah, maybe they are not the best. Maybe they got a bit of a black heart, but you know, if they can prove themselves worthy enough not to hurt anybody, we will not butcher them. Imperfect spirit um, that has proven himself worthy enough not to hurt anybody, or herself, I'm not sure, worthy enough not to hurt anybody, but does have a bit of, you know, <laughs> uh, selfish tendencies, but this one is not going to go to butcher, so we saved it from the butcher bin, and it's going to go out in the free-range aviary with the rest of them. One of my ultimate favourite parts of the job right here. It's seeing their reaction to the first time that they're free, the first time they see glass, the first time that they can experience that they're old enough that, you know, you have to be in the brooder for a certain amount of time to be able to grow up and nurture them and care for them. But now that they're old enough, they've not ever seen, you know, the outdoors. So it's always a joy to, to see their reaction to freedom. Alright. You'll come out. themselves at first but once they figure it out they love it. What do you think? It's a little overwhelming isn't it? I should show you an idea of just how big this space is. Look how small they are, look how big. <laughs> Some of them are already starting to explore and I'm sure the the ones that are already in here will be quite curious and want to introduce themselves to the new guys. This is why we do docile flock on you because we, we have quail in here that are two year, almost two years old. We've got quail in here that are in their prime and you know would pick on the really old and the really young and the newcomers especially had we not make an old docile flock. Here we go explore. Be free. We've got you know a couple docile finches and a pigeon as well. As long as everybody gets along, that's all I'm that's all that really matters. <laughs> 